Thank you. Robin Miller. Thank you, Mr Chairman. And Mr. Servant, today, Mr Dowd, and may I start by um, congratulating my colleague on the APPG, uh, the Honourable Member for North East Fife, for securing this debate and such a comprehensive account in her opening remarks. I'd also like to acknowledge the work that the Honourable Member for Brentford and Isleworth has done uh, historically here in the House on this matter. But I'd like to take this opportunity in particular as the Chairman of the APPG for Pans Pandas to extend my gratitude to the organisation Pans Pandas UK. Um, I've had the privilege of working closely with Vicky and the team and seen firsthand their tireless efforts as the only charity in the UK supporting children and families living with these conditions. Their advocacy and community support work continues to prove invaluable for patients, carers and healthcare professionals alike. Mr Chairman, like most of us here this morning, I was first made aware of Pans Pandas when a constituent contacted me to discuss her case. Separately and much later, a dear family friend contacted me to say that her daughter too had been affected. And I recognise many of the comments that were made by the Honourable Member for East Fife in their description of the circumstances they were having to deal with at home. But in this speech, I want to set out three key issues that have become apparent to parents and interested professionals over the years. <clears throat> First, the misinterpretation of symptoms. Second, the subsequent misdiagnoses. And third, the significant problems this causes for children with their conditions. First, and according to a survey by Pans Pandas UK, 95% of GPs do not know about the condition. 19% of parents said that their paediatrician was aware of the conditions but considered it too much of a controversial diagnosis to make. As a result, many children with pandas and pandas receive multiple diagnoses, often of more widely recognised conditions with overlapping symptom profiles, including anxiety disorders, sensory processing disorders, ADHD, Tourette syndrome. Some 31% of children with pans or pandas are diagnosed with autistic spectrum disorder. This is a clear lack of appropriate training for health professionals and means that the wide-ranging symptoms are not being recognised as potentially linked to one condition. Second, this continued misdiagnosis causes a significant delay in the identification of PANS, PANDAS and its effective treatment. There is currently no specific test which will prove or disprove the condition, so a diagnosis must be made on the analysis of the patient's medical history, a review of their current symptoms and a physical examination. Lab work and additional testing can be ordered to identify an infectious trigger, rule out other diagnoses and inform treatment plans. However, all of this relies upon a clinician's basic awareness of conditions. But PANDAS is listed in the International Classification of Diseases by the World Health Organization and two sets of international peer-reviewed treatment guidelines exist. In fact, it's international clinicians currently working in this field who emphasise the importance of early diagnosis of PANS and PANDAS to reduce the risk of patients developing disabling chronic neurologic conditions. Understanding the symptoms and de detecting them early is crucial for patient outcomes. Third, we cannot underestimate the strain that this places on parents, families and children affected. Many families across the UK struggle to access any healthcare provision at all on the NHS. And in that same Pans Pandas UK survey, 47% of respondents said they had not received any treatment by the NHS. And 37% said they had had to seek private health care as a result. Access to adequate health provision for families too often depends upon a parent's ability to research and advocate for their child and then fund private assessment and treatment. As we have heard, the misdiagnosis and misinterpretation of symptoms has led children to being sectioned or admitted to psychiatric hospitals and subjected to treatments which are either ineffective, inappropriate or harmful. Families faced with rejected referrals or being bounced between doctors and psychiatrists reluctant to consider or unaware of a pans pandas diagnosis must either watch their children deteriorate or somehow scrape together enough money to consult with someone with appropriate experience in the field. Private and overseas treatment must not be the only viable option for appropriate care in a nation which rightly prides itself on an inclusive and accessible health service. Mr Chairman, it's evident that significant change is needed in the UK to ensure that children receive a timely and accurate diagnosis and the appropriate treatment and support that they need. We know that the underlying cause of PANS and PANDAS is suspected to be an abnormal immune and inflammatory response to infection. So, so my first request is that research into post-infectious disorders needs to be given adequate funding and accelerated across the UK if we are to see an improvement in the training and guidelines given to clinicians. 
Second, as the PANS Pandas Working Group, we're pressing for the swift development of a UK-wide consensus on the treatment of children presenting with acute onset neuro neuropsychiatric symptoms. And as I've already highlighted, without appropriate training and guidelines, UK clinicians are currently ill-equipped. So third, we need to prioritise the development of clinical pathways to ensure children and families do not continue to suffer like many have already. I thank the UK Health Minister for her interest and invite her to meet with members of the APPG, with Pans Pandas UK and parent representative, representatives to hear their experiences firsthand. Listening to the experience of pa patients is the first step in ensuring they receive the support they deserve and we can secure the changes that are needed. Thank you.